To start, I'll add a label with the class of toggle. Inside the label will be a checkbox input with an ID of toggle. Next I'll go to Bootstrap's website to use their icons. I will then add the moon icon beside the toggle input. Then to the style sheet, I'll begin adding some styles to the toggle element. First, I'll add an orange background temporarily just to see what's going on. I'll also declare a variable to set the size of the toggle. I'll make the cursor pointer and set the position to relative. Next, I'll hide the checkbox input since it can be toggled using the label. As for the icons, I'll position them absolute and add a transition. The moon icon will be initially rotated to negative 90 degrees and set to zero opacity. When the toggle input is checked, the moon icon is rotated to default orientation and opacity. Now I'll go back to the HTML file and change the moon icon to the sun icon. I'll duplicate this block and apply some changes. Then I'll add the sun icon here as well. Last but not the least, I'll add both icon and see how it works together. And now I'm done with the toggle. Back to the style sheet, I'll remove the background and resize the icon. After the toggle, I'll start building the rest of the layout in HTML. I'll accelerate this since it's not crucial to the main topic. Now, I'm done with the HTML layout. I'll go back to the style sheet and finish the rest of the styles. I like to reset the default margin and padding for all elements and set them myself. Most importantly, I want the box sizing to border box to prevent unwanted spacing. Here, I'll define the light colors and transition. The rest of the CSS is not so crucial to the main topic, but pay attention to where I'll put the variable colors and transition.
Now that the CSS is done, I'll begin with the JavaScript part. First, I will select the toggle element. Then I will attach a change event listener to it. I'll get the current theme from the DOM and log the value to the console. But of course it will be null because I have not yet specified the data theme anywhere. So I'll go back to the HTML file and add it on the root element. I'll set the theme to dark first as I have not yet added the colors for dark theme. Back to the CSS, I'll define the colors for when the data theme is dark. Now that I've identified the current theme, I'll use it to establish the new theme. If the current theme is dark, switch to light, and vice versa. Afterwards, apply the new theme to the DOM. Next, I'll create a function to save the theme to local storage. I will open the application tab in the inspector to check the local storage. Looks like it's working, great! The next time the user visits the page, I will ensure the site is displayed in that stored theme, so I will create the function for that. While I'm at it, I will also update the toggle input state to be in sync with the selected theme. Looks like it's also working, which is good. The last feature to cover is the system color scheme. This is the theme of the user's device. Currently, I use the light theme when there's nothing in the local storage. I'll make it get the user's system theme instead. Here, I'll utilize the media query method called match media to retrieve the system's preferred color scheme. Finally, I'll replace the light value with a new function I just created.
Now, to test it, I'll empty the local storage and refresh the page. I got the light theme matching my system's preference. I'll empty the local storage again, and this time switch my system to dark color scheme. As you can see, upon reloading the page, I obtain the dark mode theme to match my preferred color scheme. When I set the light theme, the local storage is no longer empty, and I will see the light theme even if my system is using the dark scheme. I'll switch my system back to the light color scheme and run the test one last time. That concludes our guide on the light and dark mode theme switcher. We've completed the tutorial, and I hope you found it helpful. If so, please consider subscribing, liking, and sharing. Thank you.